Mike Pence is distancing himself further from his former boss, Donald Trump. The former vice president officially kicked off his 2024 presidential campaign with an event in Iowa yesterday. Pence blasted Trump over the January 6th riots, saying the former president put himself above the Constitution. On that fateful day, President Trump's words were reckless. They endangered my family and everyone at the Capitol. But the American people deserve to know that on that day, President Trump also demanded that I choose between him and the Constitution. And anyone who asks someone else to put them over the Constitution should never be President of the United States again. During the CNN town hall last night, the former vice president doubled down on those comments. And he also said, quote, Trump was wrong then and he's wrong now. CBS News political reporter Aaron Navarro is in Washington with the latest developments on the presidential race. Good to see you again. So Hello. this is the first time I think, you know, the former vice president has been overtly critical mm -hmm. and not saying like sort of veiled things like we can't live in the past. We've got to move forward, whatever the sort of stuff he was saying before. Yeah. Now he's got his dukes up. So what else did the former vice president have to say last night? Glad, Anne Marie. Good to be with you. It was interesting. In that town hall, Pence was asked repeatedly if he thought Trump should be indicted if there is clear evidence of obstruction in that classified documents case. And surprisingly, he said no. It just, it's just a bit surprising given how he has broken with Trump. But uh, he argued that it would further divide the country in his answer. But when he was asked if he'd pardon Trump if he is convicted, Pence did not really seem to give a clear answer. Uh, he also dodged answering whether he'd support Trump as the nominee and kind of in his electoral assessment gave a shrug and just said he doesn't think Trump will get the Republican nomination. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I could hear him sort of bobbing and weaving mm -hmm. to those questions, uh, even oh, Aaron. It's an extension of my Duke's Up. Yeah, you uh, said imagery. Duke's Up, so yes. I thought bobbing and weaving. <laughs> uh, and, you know, specifically, Aaron, to your point, uh, I think when Dana Bash asked him if he were to be elected president, meaning Mike Pence, uh, and uh, Donald Trump was to face any kind of criminal charges or indictments, um, would he pardon the former president? Again, right. He, on one hand, he said no one is above the law, but on the other, he said, well, uh, he wouldn't answer that question, meaning he's leaving some room for that. I don't know. It was really tough to pin him down. That's right. He, he seemed to just say, you know, I'm not going to get into hypotheticals about this. And interestingly said, you know, he's not even sure if he'll be president um, in that answer. But, Which you also know, was super when, weird. Yeah, right. Well, with Pence, though, it, it's kind of towing the line to an extent, but he really has been, since launching his campaign, going after Trump. A new ad from a pro-Pence super PAC this morning straight up just says that Trump, uh, you know, did the wrong thing on January 6th and said one man did the right thing and showed these pictures of Mike Pence uh, certifying the Electoral College vote. So it'll be interesting to see as this primary goes, uh, that battle between those two uh, former running mates. So, meantime, North Dakota Governor Doug uh, Burgum also launched his bid yesterday. I don't think a lot of people are going to know much about him. He's as conservative as it comes, though, with, you know, policies kind of similar to DeSantis. So just give us kind of his resume. He is a billionaire former software company CEO that created his business in North Dakota, born and raised there, and that was a big part of his speech. And you're right, his uh, legislative session really mirrors a lot of the red meat conservative issues that Governor DeSantis has been able to do in Florida. But interestingly enough, I was watching his speech yesterday, and it was really focused on the economy, um, a little bit on technology and innovation, a little bit more of an optimistic view of the country, not as hmm. much of this, um, you know, quote, culture war issues that other candidates candidates like Trump or the Santos lean on. Now, Bergam does have a huge name ID uh, gap that he has to overcome. Uh, not many people really know about him. He doesn't register in a lot of national polls, so it'll be interesting to see uh, how he runs his campaign going forward. Uh, Governor Ron DeSantis attended an immigration roundtable in Arizona yesterday. Uh, so who was in attendance? Because it sounds... On one hand, you Good would think question. that there are a lot of stakeholders, but who was the who, who was the audience and who was involved in this roundtable discussion? The roundtable mainly featured sheriffs from, I believe it was Georgia, Arizona, Texas, Idaho. And DeSantis, the, in his co official capacity as governor, was announcing some sort of interstate relationship uh, with these sheriffs. But interestingly enough, DeSantis, uh, you know, almost in a general election argument, was going after President Biden on this issue. Take a listen to uh, some of his critiques of Biden during the roundtable. 
I think that this has been a massive dereliction of duty by the by the president. Uh, you know, you're the president. You would think that you would take a sense of pride in ensuring that the territorial integrity of your country is actually respected. You think that if that wasn't the case, that you would feel that you would need to maybe do something about it. Instead, we've seen almost two and a half years uh, of disaster upon disaster. Um, and I don't know how you could just sit there and let the country uh, be overrun with millions and millions of people coming illegally and massive amounts of drugs coming in. One interesting thing about DeSantis and immigration is he is seemingly trying to outflank former President Trump on this issue. He talks about finishing uh, the border wall, uh, about shutting down uh, the U.S.-Mexico border itself. And he often says in his campaign speeches, for years, for decades, Republicans have complained about this issue but haven't been able to get anything done on it. And he says, in his words, that he will bring that issue to its conclusion. Hmm. All right. Aaron Navarro, always great to have you, my friend. Thank you. Good. Good to be here.